so welcome back to the channel. I'm Sunny and this is Someone Else's Cloud. If you're new here, I create content to share my knowledge and my experiences on all things cloud. This is episode 14 and in this episode, I'll show you how to build your first Terraform module. Now, I'd suggest that if you don't have a background in Terraform, that you go watch this episode, which is episode four, how to build an Azure Lab with Terraform before you go into this video or else this video won't make any sense. But I would assume if you're looking at how to create Terraform modules, you have some sort of background or experience in Terraform already. So let's get started. So what is a Terraform module? So a Terraform module is pretty much a way to package up and reuse resource configuration. So a perfect example is a virtual machine module. So a virtual machine module could be a predefined configuration that you want to standardize through your deployments, and then you can just consume and deploy them um, as required. So let's go to the next slide. So why use modules? So modules allow you to organize your configuration into logical components. An example is the virtual machine module. So you could split that up. You could also add other resources such as all the agents that you want to deploy. You can add RBACs and, and anything else that you want with a standard virtual machine deployment. So it allows you to sort of group them together as well. And then you can encapsulate configuration. So you can prevent unintended consequences of accidental changes. So with a module, you can have variable inputs and you can limit what those variable inputs will be to reduce, I guess, um, any other glitches in the system uh, that someone could create by changing an attribute that doesn't work with something in your environment. Obviously, the, the biggest benefit is uh, reusable configuration. So you can save time and avoid writing repeatable code from scratch, which will in hand reduce costly errors. Uh, human error is pretty common, you know, like trying to copy resource IDs and things like that are just, you know, very easy to put the wrong resource ID based on different environments. But obviously reusable configuration or reusable code also means efficiency. Provide consistency and ensure best practices. The module is the standard. And then inside that standard, you could put in best practices. The simple thing is adding diagnostics logs to all storage account, um, enabling only HTTPS on all web applications. So that basically allows you to provide consistency. Consistency will increase efficiency as well as supportability and allow you to scale out. Now let's break down what you're probably familiar with which is a standard structure of uh, Terraform configuration. The standard configuration is you just have a, a folder and then you have Terraform configuration files in there. So I've just got a generic standard here, which is main.tf, variables.tf and variables.tf. But this is what Terraform or HashiCorp calls the root module. So your configuration in one single folder is actually considered a root module. So if you ever get errors saying something's not defined in the root module, that generally means that if you've specified modules or something else, that your path is incorrect or it can't find it or something like that. So if we break down, I guess, what a module structure looks like, what we need to do is generalize our standard configuration that we have here, and then we provide inputs. So if you look here, we can basically structure it out. So you can see that I've got a modules folder and then generalize my deployment code and I've put it into a storage account folder, which I actually call from the root uh, module now. So that's why I have main.tf again and I'll call the modules below and that's the modules within the root module is actually called a child module. But if we break down what the code looks like, so this is what I'll show in the demo. So you can see here, I've just got a standard um, locals definition or reference up the top, which is where I provide my unique values for the environment. And then you can see I've got a resource name storage name. So I'm basically putting those locals together and then formulating uh, resource names. So then you can see here, I'm deploying a resource group. I'm just showing that because this is the base code I'm gonna deploy. Obviously I need a resource group to deploy any resource and I'm using the local references above to create the resource name and the location. And then you can see here, I've basically just got a storage account here. You can see I'm, I'm using references from the resource group above and then I've got predefined things. So this is what I want my standard to be. So I want HTTPS to be true and I want public access to be false. So if we break down, I guess, uh, what we need to do. So I spoke about this before. So that storage account code, we would generalize it. So we would take out any static values and then we'd convert them into variables. So I'll talk about that in the next slide. And then we've got the deployment code. So the deployment code will actually call the child modules and then basically add the inputs that you want to configure and deploy it. 
So this is an example of the generalized code. So you can see I've got a locals, um, but what I've got this time is I've got var dot asset name rather than local. That's because with a module, you have variable inputs. So the variables get inputted into your module. So they are now var dot asset name var dot environment. And I'm using that to create the name. So if you look at the way that I'm, I'm calling this name, which is SA, and then the first string, which is asset name, and then the second string, which is environment, and then it's um, triple zero. But then if you look here, I've generalized my code to accept uh, variable inputs as well. Obviously a resource group name and a location um, is not something you'd want static. So this would be an input. So that allows me to deploy it to any resource group. And then I've hard coded the values that I actually want to make as standard. So I want everything to be storage v2. Um, the account here will be standard. Uh, the replication will be LRS. HTTPS is true and public access false. And then I'll just add an environment tag. So as you can see, I've got count and I've actually got a variable which is instance underscore count because you can't actually use count as a variable. Count will obviously allow me to deploy multiple instances of this. And then you can see in the name, I've had to put uh, count.index, which will reference um, how many indexes are in the count, and then it's gonna add one. So that means it'll always start with one rather than starting with a zero. So you can see my storage account name has three zeros and then it'll end with a one. Now storage accounts process subscription obviously need to be unique. So that's why I've added the numbering. So you can see here my variables file. So I wanna define what the inputs will be for this module. You can see obviously a resource group, resource location, cause that's what I need to deploy a storage account. So I want those to be input so I can deploy it anywhere. I've also wanted to input asset name, environment, and the instance count. Um, but I did set a default to one in, in case you don't define an instance count, I got a fallback um, that will always define at least one deployment. Um, these are the unique attributes that separate a storage account. So everything else can be general. And then what we'll do is just walk through the demo on how I do this. So if we just flick over to VS Code. Okay, so this is VS Code here. So you can see here, I've got uh, the code that I showed. So my locals, which is gonna be the references to uh, the unique attributes for this deployment. So asset name is max, environment will be test, and location will be West US. And then I'm formulating this name, which is for the resource group name, and then the storage account. And then, um, so I've actually deployed this already, um, resource group, storage account. And you can see here, I've got no changes. So if we just flick on over to uh, Azure, so you can see here, I've got this single storage account here. So I've got no other storage accounts. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna create a, a new folder here, which is gonna be called modules. And then we'll just create a new folder called storage account. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna copy this main.tf into the storage accounts. And we're gonna remove this resource group because we're not gonna deploy it in the module. And then we're gonna <coughs> rewrite uh, basically what I had in my example. So we're gonna remove all this because we, we are gonna provide these as inputs. So this is going to be the new storage account name so um, as I showed in the slide, so SA pass through string, which is gonna be uh, the asset name, second string, which is environment, and then three zeros. And then we need to generalize this as well. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you need to, um, I wanna add a count, uh, and then I'm gonna create a variable, which would be instance count. Now, um, like I said, the reason why I wanna add count is because I wanna, use the count index to actually specify numbering in my storage account names. So if I just replace that local reference now to this, and so now this is gonna reference uh, this format, which would be the first half, and then it's gonna add an extra number on the end based on how many instances I provide, and then it'll do a plus one. Because by default, if I just don't pass this through, it'll just be zeros. Um, so I want it to always start with one. And then what we need to do is we're gonna create a, um, a new variable here, which will be <clears throat> variable dot resource group name. And then we're gonna do a variable 
dot location. So everything else you can see here besides this part. So we just need to change that to a variable. So these, this is pretty much a storage account module. So you can see all the, all the values I want it to change that I allow people to change, uh, will be all passed through the module. And then everything that's static will be sort of my standard on storage account deployments. So what we also need to create is a variables file, which I've already done over here. So I'm just going to copy it across so I don't have to type it all again. So this is pretty much just a simple definition. So you can add descriptions as well. Um, but I've got a resource group name and then I've got a string and then um, resource group location and then asset name, environment and instance count. Um, I mentioned before I had a default to one because I always wanted to be one. So you don't have to specify an instance count, especially if you're just deploying one storage account. Now there's something else that um, you can create in modules, which is a output to TF. So an output will allow you to expose your resource outside of the module. So if you deploy this, say, say if you're deploying um, a virtual machine and you need to consume attributes out of the storage account, uh, you need to provide an output. So then those values are outputted and presented to other resources in your deployment. So then the virtual machine can, can consume your module resources. So you need to provide an output to do that. And that would just look like something, uh, that would just look like something like this. So the output name would just be a storage account. And then I'm gonna output um, my resource storage object. And that's pretty much it. So that's actually just, uh, that's done. So that's what a module looks like. Now, there's other standards that you should put because um, obviously um, some things I didn't talk about, um, which I'll probably do multi-part series on this and extend it out because, um, you know, you can talk about pro modules forever. But you can also publish modules. So Terraform have a registry. You can also store it in GitHub, um, which allows you to uh, version control your modules as well. So then you can pin them because if you've dealt with Terraform um, at times when you're changing Terraform versions or Azure RM providers, uh, you may encounter bugs or breaking changes and then you need to pin your code block to a specific version, um, which we've had to do uh, a few times. Some of the little best practices that you could also include in here is um, have a readme file which obviously explain uh, what the module does and provide example um, code. You know, another standard is to create a change log file. Just for the sake of it, I'll just, I'll just do it now. So readme.md. So we'll just say, you know, storage account module. And then you can create a, a change log. So, you know, a change log is just handy um, for anyone that wants to make changes to this. So if, if this thing is exposed to a community or people at, work or a team, um, a change log will obviously help. We'll just call it change log, change log. And we'll just say, we'll just say version uh, one, 1.0.0 uh, initial release. So, and then you can also have an examples folder with example code, um, which I've already done over here just as an example. So if we just go, now you don't really need to do this, but um, if, if you're trying to operate at scale in team environments um, and, and these are consumable and you have them published, it's probably a good idea um, or else you'll be explaining yourself several times. So this is an example of the code. So I just pre-create all these values. So technically I could just deploy it. Um, I didn't call it this. So, um, so this will allow someone to basically just go in this folder and just do an init, do a plan do an apply and it should just deploy it. So that's just a, a good standard. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, oh, I, I need to create examples inside the storage account. And that's basically it. So now we'll go through back to our main.tf. So I'm gonna leave that there because that's the existing storage account. So what you need to do is rather than referencing a resource, we'll reference a module, we'll give it a name. So we'll just call it storage account um, as well. And then what you need to do is provide a source and the source can be um, obviously registries as well um, or GitHub. I'll, I'll link these below by the way. 
Uh, and then if we just go, so the folder will be modules and then it'll be storage account. And that's basically it. So obviously if you had a version, you can pin it to a version. But what we need to do is all those inputs. So if we go look at this, let's just copy it. Um, so if I just call this, so, so we know that, but I just want to show you um, how easy it is now to consume this module. Um, obviously modules can get quite complicated. So what it will do is if we look at my code, right, we're going to reference we need to pass through these these values. So the resource group name we want to deploy to, which will actually be this. Actually, I'll just copy it from here. So we're going to pass through that into our module, and then we're going to pass through the location. And then the asset name will be the same as above. So I've actually got uh, local.asset name. So we're going to pass through local.asset name uh, local dot environment and then we'll just say instance will be instance count will be two so we're going to deploy two of these let's just do a, a tffmt make it a bit pretty and we'll just do a I'm just going to go ahead and apply and hopefully it works um, and auto approve it uh, no it doesn't work uh, so okay so another thing that you need to do is you need to do an init to initialize your local workspace. So there we go. So now that's done. So now let's go do an apply. Uh, it still didn't work. Okay. So it's saying uh, that I haven't declared this in the outputs. Yep. So that that was just wrong. So let's just go again. So there you go, that's uh, 101 troubleshooting. Just read the error. And, and what's handy is it tells you the, the file name and the line. Um, and then you just basically just figure out what's happening. So let's let this deploy. So you can see it's going to deploy a storage account. Um, you can see all the defaults, the, these two here. And then you can see the name it's appended to and the other one will be one. So we'll just let this deploy. Okay, so that's done. So let's basically go to our resource group. And there you go. So I've gone and deployed one and two. So that's basically it. So that's how you create Terraform modules. Um, you can also nest modules inside modules. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend that you have too many dependencies uh, or layers inside a module because maintaining them are gonna be quite difficult. So you can imagine if you had three layers down and the module that's nested in the third layer has a broken, um, a breaking change. And now you have, to, you have to reverse engineer all the code back up to every module version um, and every dependency all the way up. So um, people, I think, think that you need to create a module for everything and anything. Um, you need to sort of weigh your pros and cons. Like an example is if I, if I worked in a place where storage accounts were considered um, a way of um, having um, data exfiltrated, then maybe I'd want to put some controls around it, such as networking rules, um, you know, HTTPS, disabling SAS tokens, putting an RBAC on it, whatever else. Or in another organization, they might have a storage account which has no sensitive data and it's just used as a scratch disk. So you might not want a module because you don't need controls, you just deploy the resource. So, you know, you still have to weigh, weigh up those pros and cons. Um, but if you are creating modules, I'd suggest you keep them to the simplest form, um, because the more complicated the more complicated it gets, obviously the the harder it is to maintain and manage. And then obviously, if you have a hundred modules, um, every time there's an Azure RM um, provider update, you could potentially break, you know, forty percent of those modules, and then you have to go retrofit them or start pinning versions. Um, so it gets a bit tricky to manage. So as you gain more experience, I think with Terraform modules, you'll start understanding the quirks or just Terraform in itself, actually. Um, you'll understand, you know, these things and challenges um, and how to scale out your code. So obviously generalizing is the, the, the best way and simplifying. So that's pretty much Terraform modules. I'll probably create a part two, part three, part four. Who knows? You know, you can talk about modules all day. Um, but I'm wrapping up this episode and I'm signing out. See ya.